For more on what this means for the U.S. and Cuba, we are joined now by Richard Gott in London. He wrote the book, Cuba, A New History. He also worked for many years at The Guardian as a foreign correspondent and features editor. Richard, thanks so much for joining us on this historic day. Let me start by uh, reading from a piece you wrote in February of 2013 because I think it's interesting. You wrote, the most intriguing question now concerns Cuba's relationship with the United States. Many people have expressed hope that Obama, with no re-election problem to worry about, might feel emboldened to make conciliatory noises towards the existing Castro government. I know you were banging away at the keyboard writing that, but did you really believe it at the time? Yes, I think I did. I thought he, he had an opportunity to do it. And I think it's, it's a fantastic day that this is now realized the first time for 50 years that America and Cuba can start getting on together again, as indeed they used to do in the 19th century. I mean, we, looking back over 200 years, the American-Cuban relationship was always a very strong one. You also wrote that most of the people, both in Cuba and the U.S., have begun to forget what the quarrel was all about. Do you think that led to today? Yes, I think there's a distinct uh, uh, feeling of sort of deja vu, and they wanted to do something different. And I think, I think the, the, the impact of the new Argentine pope was also important, a Jesuit, a clever man. He realized that from the Latin American perspective, they need to have America, North America, back on board. It took courage on the part of both of these leaders. Uh, which one had more to lose by, by taking this step, do you think? I suppose uh, Obama, really, uh, because he hasn't been a very successful uh, president in foreign policy terms. And this gives him the opportunity to show that he can do the right thing and, and, and make a real important change. How does the relationship change between these two countries moving forward? And I mean, how does the face of Cuba change over time? And when might you see that? Well, I think the, um, the, the changes that have already happened in, in Cuba with sort of small scale capitalists and people beginning to sort of build their own homes and sell their own motor cars and all, all that sort of thing, I think those people will be absolutely um, so delighted by this change that they will be able to go back to what happened before 1959, where there was regular commercial exchange between Havana and, and Florida. So I think that th th there will be a sense of great optimism in, in Cuba. Richard, talk to me about this U.S. policy. Was it a failed policy? I mean, uh, you, you pointed out in that article I, I cited that uh, the Castros have managed to outlive so many American presidents, and they're still going strong. Um, and the U.S. never really seemed to get what they wanted out of this deal, did they? No, they didn't. I think it, it, it's been a, tra a tragedy for, for both sides, but, but really particularly for America. I think that if, um, if President Kennedy had not been assassinated, I think that the Cubans and the Americans were moving towards uh, a rapprochement in, 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 the, in, the, in the 1960s. And it's just so sad that it lasted all this time, and I think people will look back on that period and say, how on earth did the Americans allow this to happen? Because it was essentially in the Americans' hands to offer the hand of friendship to their smaller neighbor. Well, Richard, let me, let me, uh, let me continue down that path. I mean, there was a declassified document. It was a presidential directive from President Carter when he first took office that they, they should move towards creating a new relationship with Cuba even then. I mean, we're talking years and years ago. What has been the stumbling block for so many decades? Uh, what's stood in the way of these two countries reaching out like they did today? I think the, the Cold War was very responsible for it uh, continuing in this way. I mean, Carter m made an effort, but he was completely sort of overruled by the rather hawkish anti-Soviet people that he had in the State Department. And I think it's, uh, that, that was one of the problems. Richard Gaunt joining us from London with his perspective. So great to talk to you. Thanks so much.